This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar exploring Boris FX Continuum 2022.5. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. Boris FX Continuum is the Swiss Army knife for visual effects for video editors and motion graphics creatives. In this short video tutorial, I'll show you how to create a simple blur effect using masks and mocha mask tracking in Continuum in Final Cut Pro. This footage again is from Terry Holland and Northeast Drone Video. We've got a couple bicycling down a western Massachusetts road in the Berkshires. Well, as long as we can, let's do something special with this. So what I want to do is I want to blur everything except her and have sort of a spotlight showing how she's traveling down the road. So we'll go up to the blurs category and we'll grab blur and drag it on top of the clip. That may be a bit too aggressive. <laughs> so select this, we'll go to the effects editor. And I've got different options to choose from in terms of how we're blurring. But the default for me is fine, it's just too blurry. So I'm gonna go over to the blur quantity and change it from 50 down to 25. And that's maybe 20. That looks better. And we'll accept that. So I'll click Apply. And now we're back in Final Cut. The Apply button is faster than closing it. Sometimes I remember the Apply button, and sometimes I don't accept. Everything is still blurry. What I need is a, is a cutout that just emphasizes her. Well, that cutout is called a mask. And to do the mask, we go to the next really big deal inside Continuum, which is called Mocha Mask. Click here. And this shows me just the source video. What I need to do is to draw a region in the video that I want the effect to apply to. And there's multiple ways we can do it. I can draw a circle or an ellipse. I can draw a rectangle or a square. I can use a magnetic lasso tool to select surfaces or edges. I can create a, a B-spline or Bezier. Although I could create a really customized form with the B-spline, I'm going to create an ellipse, which I will click here. And I'll just simply draw a circle right about there. To move it, you grab the white border and drag it wherever you want it to go. I'm going to put it right there. And now we're going to tweak. First thing I'll do is I'll pull this up, pull this over, and pull this up so I can define sort of the bottom of where I want that to be. Uh, pull this, get rid of this one. So control click and say point, delete points, pull this up and over, right about there. Get rid of this one, control click, control click, point, delete points. Control click, point, delete points, and pull this one. Whoa, whoa. There we go. I want to grab. There we go. Grab the point, grab the point, push this one in. Ah, it's a work of art. Notice this timeline at the bottom. The red means that there's no tracking data here for it. So to track, I use these three commands over here. This tracks forward from the playhead, back from the playhead, and stops the tracking. I can track based upon XY movement, horizontal and vertical, scale as it gets closer, rotate as it's rotating, skew, and perspective. The best track, truthfully, comes when you get perspective, but it also takes a lot longer, and I'm not going to waste the time for it. So I'm going to track this based upon... Uh, these four criteria and click this button. Notice the playhead along the bottom is now tracking her as she moves. This is not using point tracking like we're used to in Premiere or Final Cut. It's using planar tracking. It sets a plane around an object and tracks the shift of the plane, doesn't just simply look for specific points. This makes it much more accurate, much less likely to fail, and gives us some good results. Now here, things are starting to get out of control. Notice how this is expanding. So I press the space bar to stop, and I'll push this in to keep the shape closer to her. 
Because of the blur we're going to be creating, I could get away without doing that, but I want to show that I can't. And notice that down here, it added a green tracking keyframe. This means that the shape will be slowly modifying itself as it starts with this shape keyframe to this shape keyframe, and now we'll track forward some more. And what I'm looking for is I want to make sure that she is not getting outside the shape. And you can see the shape, even though we're, she's getting closer and more square on to the camera, the shape itself is adjusting as she is changing her position. And again, I'll hit the space bar to stop. Again, I'll pull this in just a bit and pull this in just a bit and continue the track. If I hit the space bar, it'll play the clip but I have to click the tracking button to track the clip. Now here's something that breaks Final Cut. We're about to have a van pass behind her and Final Cut always gets distracted and stays with the van, breaking the track. Mocha Pro does not. Cue the van. And comes in and the track remains solid. Doesn't try to follow the other object. And notice how the track is now beautifully around just her body. It's, it's managed to change the size as we're changing the size and perspective. If I play this back, option left arrow, and just hit the space bar, notice how that track smoothly tracks with her as she's cruising down the road. So now we've got the track created. We'll close this, accept changes, say save. But, huh she's blurry everything else is not and look at the sharp edges we've got here this is where the third key component of the effects inside continuum is helpful that's the pixel chooser the pixel chooser allows us to modify the mask so first we're turning it on i could view the mask but i can see pretty much what i'm doing here i'm going to twirl down mask and invert it so that I get everything else blurry. And then I'm going to add a little bit of feathering just to soften the edges a bit. Not a lot, as these things go. And now watch what happens as we play this back. She stays in focus. While everything else is blurry. Because I'm playing... Final Cut needs to render this to give us the highest quality. We'll give it about, I don't know, another couple seconds. I'm running on a, an M1 MacBook Pro, a 16-inch with an M1 Pro chip inside it, so it's not the fastest machine out there. And now that I've got it rendered this far, let's just watch it one more time. Now back up from the beginning. Look how that track is so smooth and keeps up with her. Very, very cool. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar exploring Boris Continuum 2022.5. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 338. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers a variety of software and we update it multiple times each month. For more information, visit LarryJordan.com membership. And thanks.